the May tier three principal and coach meeting. Still letting a few more people in. If everyone would enter their name and the role in their school that they um, that they have, if they would enter that into the chat, that would be much appreciated. We do keep this for documentation for the support that we provide to our schools. A few more people coming in. So my name is Monique Sullivan, and I am the Continuous School Improvement Coordinator. I know most of you already know who I am, but there might be a few people new to this meeting. Um, although I am listed under ESCA, I work with the assessment team under Maine's Model of School Supports, which falls under several sections of ESSA statute, but specifically Title Section 111 and Section 1003. And section 1111 or 1111 is the section that outlines all the requirements for the plans. And then section 1003 is actually the funding. It's called section 100 funding. That's where it actually out, um, talks about the funding that goes to schools identified for uh, school improvement. A few more people still coming. And on the slide, it shows our school leadership coaches, which um, those are our school leadership coaches at this point in time. And then our mission and vision and strategic priorities for the department. And as I've said in the past, this is the driving force behind all of the work that we do at the main department of education. So today's objectives are to stay informed about the latest grant requirements and updates. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the tier identification notifications, but I'm going to do that at the end of the meeting because it may generate some questions. Um, and then we're going to, again, keep working with the year at a glance to operate your leadership team meetings. And then we built in some time to, for you guys to participate in some collaborative time to hear how other tier th three schools are using their school improvement funds. And we know that there are some schools that are here that will be exiting tier three status. And we also know that some schools uh, attending this uh, webinar will be continuing in their tier three status. So we're gonna break the groups up uh, based on tier three status. So a few updates. Again, thank you to all of you who did fill out the survey form. That was a Microsoft form asking you to ask to answer some questions about how you're using or how you used your FY23 funds, how you used your FY24 SIG money. Um, the due date was April 11th. Uh, well, thank you. We did have 39 schools that did complete the survey. Uh, of the coaches, we did look at that data to try to plan for um, the future tier three principal meetings, but also any kind of support that we can provide to you, to you in the future but only 39 out of 71. So, um, and we are using that report also to get some information back to, uh, to the US Department of Education. So if you have not completed that, please do that. Uh, we do use that information. Um, let's see, Maine's model school support. Like I said, I'm going to talk about this at the end of the presentation. Right now we have 11 notification levels um, and I think I just added a 12th one um, right before this meeting. Uh, and then FY23 and 24 SIG funds, FY23 funds, I know I sound, I've repeated myself and I sound like a broken record, but the FY23 funds do expire. They run out on 9-30-2024. There is no extension. They're done. So if you have not spent that money or have not invoiced for those funds, have not obligated them, you need to do that um, quickly. Uh, nothing can be paid for on after 930. So if you try to put something in and it says 10-1, it's going to get kicked back. Um, and then you also have three months after that till 1230 to uh, what we call liquidate or submit your reimbursements to get um, reimbursed for the cost that you had up until 930 of 2024. That being said, we have not received an up. We have not received an update or notification from the U.S. Department of Education regarding the tidings waiver for FY24 SIG funds. The FY24 SIG funds are actually FY23 
uh, Title I money. And those that period of liability does end on 930 as well. But um, we're assuming we're going to get the tidings waiver, but technically we have not gotten it. So if you have some money that you haven't spent in your FY24 funds, um, you need to do that as well. Now, the only people or the only schools that will be eligible for the tidings waiver are those that are that are continuing in tier three status. If you have received an exit notification, you will not be able to spend your FY24 funds past um, 930 as well. So um, FY23 and FY24 funds are expiring for both. Um, both of those are, are expiring for schools that are exiting tier three status. Um, also, the FY25 SIG application, <laughs> barring any unforeseen <laughs> circumstances, we are hoping to have that ready and go be live uh, by July 1st. Um, and those are for the schools that are continuing in Tier 3 status. Um, um, we also have an updated Maine's Consolidated Plan, which is available on the MDOE website. So um, if you go to the MDOE website, go to the uh, main small school sport, go to the ESSA piece on like the left-hand side. Uh, it is the updated plan and um, it is the entire plan. It just includes all the updates. So it's almost 200 pages long. So you might want to do search and find if you're trying to look for something in particular. And then um, the June tier three principal and coach meeting has been moved to June 13th. I will send out a notification when we get closer to that, but the Zoom link has not changed. That just stays the same. Um, I am not going to be in the office um, the week it was supposed to be planned or was planned. So that's why I'm moving it up um, a little bit. And I'm sure most of you are probably happy because that's probably some of you might be out of school by then. So um, it probably works out well for everyone. And a year at a glance, I know we were kind of a month behind when we do these, but it is just a good reminder that if we're going through the year at a glance um, in May, you should be reflecting on your action steps, um, any PD needs and timelines for summer PD. And we've been talking about this since March and April. So this, again, is a little bit just a review for what we talked about at the April meeting. Uh, but now is really the crunch time. And if you haven't done that, um, you really do need to spend the next um, you know, few weeks really getting that ironed out so that you have that in plan and in place. That being said, also we talked about this, um, this is a similar slide from the April's presentation, but to think about you know, looking at step one, analyzing your progress toward goals, really look into your action steps. Did you meet them? Did you not meet them? Did you complete them? Did you not complete them? To what degree did you complete them? And do you have the data that supports the effectiveness of the action step? And um, was the action step effective in addressing your SMART goal and um, the growth area that you identified um, and any of your resource inequities that you identified? Because the, um, the statute is very clear that the plan must address um, the identified resource inequities um, that um, that the school conducted or found out. So it needs to address that. And it also needs to address the areas or the indicators that um, rendered the tier the uh, tier three status. So those are things to think about as well. The way the SIG application is set up, it should be doing all that, but it's always a good reminder to go back and double check of that on that. Step two, um, you know, especially now with FY23 funds coming to an end, figure out where your reimbursements are, work with your business manager, figure out if you have obligated expenses, do you have a bunch of, uh, do you have expenses, you just haven't invoiced for them yet, um, start really getting that worked out. Because a lot of people go on vacation, and I know July is a ghost town at schools, so, you know, try to get all that done before everyone goes on vacation. Um, and then step three, you want to finish up your current 2023-24 application. Um, and um, you want, I mean, so you want to finish up your current 23-24 school year. This can include both 23 and 24 funds, depending on how you built your projects or built your strategic plan. Um, and then step four, really, you want to keep working on that summer professional learning and the funding availability. 
And I can't stress enough the 930 deadline. Uh, and I say that because I guarantee you every, I've been working at the department for a little over five years and we always have school districts that are like, I didn't know the money expired. What do you mean I can't put in a, an expense for 10 to one or 10? So we always have those schools. So that's why all of us stress it. And across the um, ESCA team, we always stress those deadlines. And then again, invoicing should be done on a continued basis and try to get those expenses obligated as soon as possible. And then again, uh, I showed this last slide, but I think it's a really good example, a really good visual for me of thinking about you're looking at your SIG applications, 23-24, you're looking at your comprehensive needs assessment because that is the driving force behind all your work. And then you're also um, looking at your leadership team and you're going back and you're connecting all those pieces. Um, did we need our action? We, do we have the data that supports the work that we did throughout the school year? And uh, your, your CNA really is the backbone of your school improvement plan. And especially for those of you who are those schools that are exiting into tier one status or with no support, you wanna keep that school uh, that school-wide plan or that uh, comprehensive needs assessment because that is your backbone. That is your driving force uh, behind all the work that you do. Even if you are exiting, we don't want you to end back up in school improvement on in a tiered status um, when we run the model, I'm sorry, when we do identifications again. So this is a, just a really good practice and it's, um, it's just best practice. And again, regarding summer planning, um, you wanna plan those the SIG grant uh, program for summer 2024. This is like June, July, and August. Um, for those schools that are getting, um, sorry, I grabbed this and forgot to take that part out, but this is for uh, the schools that are newly identified, they're getting a small planning grant to help them because they don't have the 23 and 24 money like um, the schools that are um, currently tier three. Uh, but just for all schools, completing the FY23, FY24 SIG applications, uh, working with staff to update the CNA school-wide plan over the summer, plan to participate in PD approved aligned um, with the strategic plan. So you wanna make sure, I, I've been seeing a lot of just, I've got all this money, I wanna go, I wanna go to Vegas, I wanna go here, I wanna go there, but you need to make sure that it is directly tied to your strategic plan. And it's not just, hey, let's go to a national conference in San Diego. It's, oh no, that conference in San Diego, it, it fits all these pieces and it's really gonna address. And then what we're going to do when we come back um, with that knowledge that we've learned and that uh, um, that um, the uh, skills that we've learned and how we're going to um, disseminate and use that information in our schools. And then for continuing tier three schools, um, working on the FY25 SIG application, setting up LT meetings and agendas, start planning your FY24-25 school year, start doing that now. And don't wait until September when it's like you're drinking out of a fire hose and you just don't have time to do all that. So start working now on getting that set up. So there's a lot you could be doing uh, throughout the summer, but it's not, I feel like it's not as a stressful time it is, as it is in September. And then the last piece I just wanna talk about is I know that I've mentioned this in some of my Zoom meetings for schools that are exiting and for schools that were unable to exit, but it is really important that you understand regardless of if you are exiting school improvement or exiting tier three or converting to tier one or you're continuing in tier three status, you need to make sure you're keeping track of all, your, um, of, all of your documentation uh, because even if you are, for, we just had this conversation on the ESCA team, we are working on monitoring for FY24-25 school year, and it's actually going to monitor the 23-24 school year. So even if you're an exiting school and your district gets, gets selected to be monitored for the 24-25 school year, you're still going to have to provide all that evidence because you were an identified school during the 23-24 school year. So you want to keep track of all that. You want to be able to provide that um, that information. And if you are converted, converting to tier one, you still have to keep um, an, a tier one plan, uh, which I talked about at the Zoom meeting for that school. So again, this is just kind of a, a, a slide that I threw in there just as a reminder slide that 
if you are continuing, you need to keep that documentation. If you are exiting or converting, you still need to keep that documentation. Okay, so right now what we wanted to do was to um, break people or break schools up into two groups. Um, one group will just stay here in the main room and then uh, the other group will go into a breakout um, room. And the one that's going to stay here is just going to talk about any questions you have about exiting, um, about your exit plans. Or when I, we talked to the coaches, the coaches said that schools had some questions about their exit plan, uh, plans for June, July, and August. How do they obligate? How do they get that spent down? How do they liquidate? Um, how do they even check to go in and check to see um, how much money they have? You also wanna make sure that um, if you're exiting that your school improvement um, plan continues after 9-30-24. If you are exiting with no support, then you don't need to worry about that piece. Um, and then if you are converting to tier one, you're going to wanna keep working on your um, CNA or school-wide plan. Um, and then what we what you could use that as your um, tier one or ATSI plan. Group two, those of you are the schools that are continuing tier three status. Um, again, working on that, really looking at your CNA, any questions you have about planning for your summer costs, momentum for June, July, and August, um, update on the ability to exit uh, timeline, and then obligate FY23 funds by 9-30-2024. Um, I did send a, a notification out to uh, the unable to exit schools and um, and I apologized. We're constantly looking at the statute and trying to, and looking at our plan. And I inadvertently told, incorrectly had told the unable to exit schools that they um, they would be able to exit eligibility in the fall of 2024. But when we went back and looked at the data, um, you actually need two years, consecutive two years uh, of not um, meeting the tier three um, identification criteria. And so you have to have 24, 25 would be your first year and 25, 26 would be your second year. So the earliest that um, that a school could exit would be um, the fall of 26 because next year or no, the fall of 25. Yeah, because it would be 23, 24, and then 24. You have to kind of like work backwards. Uh, but I did send a notification out to those schools notifying them of that. Um, again, the purpose of this is just to get some questions answered, to hear what other schools are doing or how they're problem solving, like how are they address, how are they tackling their exit plan, how are they reviewing their CNAs. Um, right now I have about 20 minutes, but I think we have a pretty small group today, so we may not need that much time. So I think what I'll do is I'll just, we'll do 20 minutes. I'll, I'll pull you guys all back um, at about 1040, yeah, 1040. And then we'll continue with, um, just have a couple more slides, I wanna talk about identifications. And then it'll be open for any general questions that you have or um, you wanna to make to the entire group. So I think I already have the, I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm sorry, that's again. Okay. So I was able to uh, attend both session or both groups and a lot of great feedback. It was great to hear some of the great things that our schools are doing, even the ones that are continuing into tier three status. There's some great celebrations, some great work that's happening, uh, discussion about how they're being able to tie back some of their activities or some of their action steps that are going directly toward they're seeing the, um, the improvement of student achievement or like attendance and connecting it back to the action steps that they're actually doing. So you wanna keep track of that. Like this is actually working and we wanna continue working it with that and we have the data to back that up. So to move a little bit um, kind of to a different uh, piece, but I wanted everyone to see why it's taking so long to get out the identification notifications. Uh, the way our model is set up, it is very, um, it's multifaceted. It has a lot of different pieces to it and be able to exit and convert or go to a different support level is, um, it's not simple. And so I tried to quantify it a little bit here on this chart 
because I know everybody wants to know how many schools, you know, are in the same status as me or as my school. So um, and there were tier three. We had 13 that were able to exit with no support. We had in tier uh, three, we had able to exit with tier one support, 23. Um, unable to exit, did not meet the exit criteria. And so they had they had three years of being in tier three. Um, and then when they were eligible to exit, they did not meet the, uh, the criteria, which means they did not have two consecutive years uh, where not all their student populations were emerging. Um, and then there was tier three not eligible to exit with support. So um, these were um, the uh, schools that were re-identified last year. They're not, I mean, I'm gonna send a reminder notification to those schools and you guys, those, you guys are a part of this meeting, but just to let you know that there are different levels of tier three and there's different cohorts. So we have cohort one, cohort two and cohort three. Uh, we're in cohort three right now. And um, so there were 20 that were uh, re-identified or, or last year. So they're, they're just finishing up their first year. So they have two more years. And then we had a cohort or a group that was identified for tier three supports last year, but they were called newly identified and they were outside the 5%. So technically they were tier three, but they didn't get the support. And there are 27 of those. Some of those have now been identified um, for tier three support, which is number five. So those 16 of the 27 um, are still meeting tier three requirements. And so they are going to now be identified with supports. Um, and then they have two feeder schools that our plan says that if an identified school, um, then we need to provide support to their to their feeder schools. Um, the other, the other, you know, the the other the one the outside of the 18, the ones that are in that 27, they're technically still tier three, but they're just not getting support because if we ran when we ran the model this year, they did not meet the tier three um, identification criteria. So they're just keep if they keep they do that again um, after their third year, then they'll be able to exit. Um, we also have um, tier three met the criteria in 23, 24, but they're outside the 5%. Um, they're not, and so they're um they're going to be they're tier three, they met the criteria, but they're not going to be getting tier three support. And there are 29 of those. Uh, we had um Tier two, which was not identified this year, but uh, we identified them last year because it's off every three years. And um, we had, uh, they're not eligible to exit because they're just in their first year. So they need to do two more years. And we had 86 of those. Those schools were notified last year. Tier one, um, we had 35 that were able to exit. That means they, um, they, for three consecutive years, they did not, they had no student populations that were emerging. And then tier one, we had um, student, uh, we had schools that were unable to exit because this is their, this was their year to be able to exit, but they still have at least one student uh, group that is, or student population that is um, emerging across all indicators. And then tier one, we had some schools that were identified last year in 22, 23, 23. And then we had um, some schools that, um, that are identified uh, that they can't they can't exit because they're not we had 55 schools that were identified last year and they're only finishing up their first year so they need two more years to be able to get that three years and then we have tier one that um, yeah were identified this year um, and there are 36 of those and they can't exit because they just got identified so they're going to have to do three years before they can be eligible to exit so there's a difference between being able to exit. And being um, it, and being not eligible to exit or eligible to exit. So eligible, you have to do your three years. Able to exit means that you've done your three years and do you meet the exit criteria? Um, and it's three consecutive years for tier one, and it's two consecutive years for tier two um, to be able to exit those statuses. And so all the tier threes um, up to four, up to yeah, up to five have been notified. Um, I'm working to identify the six, the, the tier three that have met criteria, but they're not going to be getting support. And I'm working on the tier one for FY23. I'm working on those identifications um, like right today. So the, your superintendent and those school principals will be getting those notifications. So this is why it's so nuanced and there's so many pieces to it. 
um, and um, why the year uh, that you get identified is really important when it determines your ability to exit. Um, and then we do, we are going to do identifications again um, in three years. So that's what our model says. So um, hopefully um, it could be possible that you would exit the status or you can convert to another status um, depending on where the school is. And that is it. Um, and then um, I'm sure there'll be questions on that, but here's our contact information. So if I know in the main breakout group or in the main room, there were some questions. If you had invoicing, specific invoicing questions, you'd want to reach out to Tyra. Um, and then this is how you can get a hold uh, or can stay connected with the main department of education. So we don't have much time, but we do have about seven minutes. If there are any other questions that you have for me or for um, uh, school improvement. 